When you're the defending champion, you always have that target on your back. But there's a reason Justin Drummond and Team Quantified are the defending champs. They caught them better than everybody else. They're at it once again here at the Emerald Coast Blue Marlin Classic, stop number six for the Sport Fishing Championship. This is Sport Fishing Championship. And this is day two coverage of the SFC on YouTube and our digital fans watching live as we're in studio and the anglers are out there on the Gulf of Mexico. Stop number six, the ECBC, more commonly known. It's the Emerald Coast Blue Marlin Classic. 81 teams took off from Baytown Marina yesterday at noon. They don't return until 6 p.m. tomorrow. I'm Robbie Floyd with Peter Miller, multi-time Sailfish World Champion, and we're seeing Team Quantified and that free tees talking about how they got it done last year. And you know what, Peter? They're getting it done this year as well. That's right. They're always on task. You can see uh, James doing a bimini twist there, just casually tying a knot that most people take a month to tie. And these guys are always on fire. They know what's going on, and they can basically catch any fish that swims, and that's what they're doing. Here we are at day one at 8.47 p.m. And this Still is a little light. Yeah, this is it's the evening and the afternoon again. It took a while to get to the points. They'd done a, a sailfish catch earlier on in the day, but again, this is just before evening, and this is kind of when our billfish have been shutting down, right? So this is your last chance to get them before nightfall. That's right. It's the last chance for romance. He's trying to bait that fish. He's got his rod out to the side, putting in that clean water thumb on the spool. He's waiting, waiting, finger tipping it, waiting for that bite, that telltale bite. And as soon as he throws that rod forward, he's going to be dropping back, dropping back. He's about to lock it up with his left hand. He's got that cross hand lock up. And it's happening, and he's about to just put the tip low. I hope it bends over, and sure enough, it did. Meaning they are tight. <laughs> yeah, and this was the the bigger fish than the sailfish. I guess I can let the cat out of the bag. This is, this is going to be a blue marlin. This was yesterday. This is yesterday evening. They'd already caught sailfish, which we thought that they would do. I know with Ronnie Moore here yesterday, he's like, ah, they're going to stay with the small fish. But then when a big one shows up, oh my, these are these are more points, Peter. Oh, yeah. You know, they had the baits presented, and they're ready for pretty much anything that comes into the spread. And that's exactly what happened. You can see this rod's a little heavier than they normally use. They had a little time to make that adjustment, to put out that proper bait for that fish. They're matching the hatch. Again, it, uh, they took off at noon. The first blue marlin of the tournament caught by Liquid Apple at 740. This was just after that. And once that's cleared off the board, that extra 100 bonus points isn't to be had. But when you're talking about catching sailfish worth 75 points, you're catching several sailfish worth of points right here with this one blue marlin if they were to get it on board. And look at it. It's a ways out there. It's big, and she's jumping. Oh, it's beautiful to see those blue marlin greyhounding, pushing that water, making massive wake with that giant tail, big shoulders, and the guys are backing quickly. You know, they're not fooling around. They're not going to waste any time on this fish. They want to try to get that release, Robbie, as fast as possible, because if you give it any extra time, if you kind of relent and can sit back for a minute and rest and don't go for it charging ahead, you may lose it. This is a point precious fish, and you got to catch it within a certain amount of time, because otherwise they could chafe through that leader. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, and up till this point, um, it started off the day with the first catch of the day, Jay Graves, who you're seeing here with that sailfish, and then a couple of other teams like Rebecca, Nikki Bella catching fish. So it wasn't all about quantified. Other people are catching fish while you are, but when you catch a blue, you know they're not going to jump ahead of you anytime soon. You're catching the biggest fish in the in the Gulf of Mexico. That's right, us. and they're backing down. It almost looks like they have their underwater lights on. It looks like it's that late. Maybe it's just glowing. Maybe my monitor's glowing, but it no, looks good. Dark. That's got a nice glow to it. They got a blue, blue glow with a blue on the end of the line. And if you want to see a lot more of this action, you can go to SFC, catch the action. All you got to do is scan that QR code with your cell phone, and you're deep in it. I know I live uh, in Texas, and this is still Central Time Zone, but the very easterly side of that 
uh, Central Time Zone. So this is, I mean, this is pretty dark here. I think our camera is making it look lighter than it actually is. You know what's interesting, Robbie? I'm seeing this for the first time, and I'm seeing this leader man is about to leader this fish. I mean, we're seeing this in real time. I don't think there was any cut here. This fish is at the transom. We got the leader man right there. That's we got the GoPro there. Everybody's there. And you can see how the angler backed up pretty much all the way into the salon so they could get that leader. And that's what good teamwork's about. Ooh. And that's a nice size fish. <laughs> good release. Our first time to see this. And Whoa. Jumping right there at the deck. <laughs> hey. Listening to the celebration, that's a big bonus fish. Again, because if you're thinking they're going to target some of the, you know, maybe whites or sales, smaller varieties, and you get a big. Uh, blue marlin bite there. And uh, we got lucky and made it happen. Uh, chain bite teased up. My boy Jake got it on the pitch. Just the way it should happen. So chill right there. So chill. You know, the best captains are like that. You know, they're not jumping around. They're serious. They're like, let's get the baits out. There could be another one right behind the boat. And looking at the points as they stand right now, this moment, uh, middle of the second day, quantified has doubled up the field. Liquid Apple, um, who caught the first blue marlin of the tournament in second, Florida Lee, Gross Rowell, a big uh, tie for third place, 350 points for a blue marlin. But that shows you. There's a lot of blue marlin biting here at this tournament. Where the last event, what we saw the Gulf Coast Masters last week, it seemed like Quantified was getting it done with sales. That's right, they were. They got about, tw I think they had 20 releases on Billfish, yeah. on Billfish in that tournament. That was pretty special. But you know, we've got a lot of blue marlin being caught. We've got sales, we've got whites, we've got a little bit of everything going on, and we've got a great tournament to show you. And we're bringing it to you live. Thank you uh, for watching here on our digital platforms. We'll be on CBS Sports Network at the top of the hour. Peter, uh, glad to have you in Little Rock. I no, I thought we saw you in an inner tube uh, out there floating behind Crystal Hall yesterday, and I know you you show up at the last minute. Were you, were you getting some? It's kind of my thing, you know. When it comes to fishing, I'll fish on any kind of boat. It could be a rowboat, <laughs> a canoe, a kayak. It could be a rubber raft. It could be a tractor inner tube that I fill with air, and I have rod holders that I build and put around it. It's ah, kind of my thing. So if you do think you saw me, it you been. probably did. Could have been. Hey, one thing about Sandestin, a beautiful facility. Um, I, I keep getting uh, enticed by the golfing, the fishing, just the laying out. Um, that, this is where you want to go. You want to catch fish? We see it didn't take very long for these guys to make those runs. And Ronnie Moore actually went from studio out to the out to the beach itself. So that's him on the parasail. But you, they've got it all here at Sandestin. Yeah, I mean, this is one of one of the famous spots here in Sandestin. You know, the Emerald Coast. This is this is rock that's come from the Appalachian Mountains down the Mississippi River into the Gulf. We got a hundred miles of stretch of beauty, and this was coined and termed the Emerald. Coast because of that. Yeah, they bring a blue water turning to green there at the coast. Yeah, but you know, it's definitely a, a favorite of uh, the American crowd, but also Europeans come here. I mean, that's some white sandy beach uh, there in, in Destin and San Destin. And the only way to tell the difference between the different groups or where they're from is by the size of their bathing suits. You have a different, <laughs> you have a different cut, and that's what you'll notice. <laughs> You're rocking the mankini in, in Miami. Don't go, it's a, don't it's go. It's more lie. of a tankini. Yeah. It goes all the way through. Don't lie to me. But uh, there's a lot to do in <laughs> in Sandes and let's work our way through the catch alerts. Now these are from today, uh, 156. We're seeing quantified on there a couple of times, but um, several of our SFC teams that actually have cameramen on board catching fish today. That's right, and I see Miss Mam there at 11.13 a.m. and they've got a blue marlin. That's seven, exciting. Seven billfish caught on day one. Um, Twelve billfish until just before we went on air here. And again, you're seeing that uh, day two. So this morning also a released blue marlin by Quantify. So one to end the night, one to start the morning, and that's how you get it done. Yeah, there's, there's a good bite going on right now. Yesterday was a sloppy jalopy out there. You know, the baits are getting tossed around. You got to put a chin weight to keep them underwater because those fish do not want to chase those baits out of the water. This now, if it's a flopping mackerel, yeah, they'll go for yeah. it. They're going to go for it, but it's different with a ballyhoo. I was looking at this morning from 9.02 till 11.24. There were about six or seven blue marlin caught. That was big. Rebecca, one of the teams that we have a camera on board, we know uh, this morning they started things off bright in early at 717 with the release sailfish and John ramming but uh Rebecca getting it done again that we thought Rebecca as well as um, quantified we're going to be targeting these sailfish and just rack up a lot of these fish but right now 
not the numbers that the, I think that they were expecting. You know, they have they have some time. You know, as we always say, it's never over till it's over. You can see he's prepped and ready and poised for that drop back. Finger between the line between the forefinger, and he's about to drop back here. Fish is coming up, but you want to keep that bait skipping. You want everybody to see what's going on. And now it's possibly on the other bait, so he's getting ready to drop back. You know, these fish shift around from bait to bait, from teaser to teaser, so you have to be ready to move at any given moment. Again, this is uh, Team Rebecca, one of the Texas teams. Uh, yeah, you see Texas that fish, teams. Robbie, you see that fish shooting around. You know, they're, they're back and forth, back and forth. You can see the teaser there and the wind's blowing. They're making a turn. Everything changes when you go to make a turn into the wind. Everybody's calm and collected. When it's on the one side, you're working hard to keep it in that clean water. But once you make that turn, you slow it down, you want that fish to come up, things change. Now, all of a sudden, these guys are over, under, under, over. Bring it in, you know, switch it to this side. And you know, it's really tough to bring your bait across that white water in case he cuts to the other side. So you want to have other guys already on this other side, which you see. They're already poised and ready for a bite. You can see he's tight here. He's tight on the fish. They're winding it in, bringing the halyards down. You want to bring everything in. He snapped it out of the rigger clip. He's going to wind it in, wind it up. And a lot of times, these white marlin, these sailfish, are going to swim in packs, and you might get another shot. This is actually Rebecca on day one with Reed Johns. This was their second fish. They'd already caught a white marlin just before. Cody Schmidt had one. Uh, but you're seeing the seas. They look like they were a little bit bigger at times uh, where the, some of the other boats were, but still a little rolly, but not like what we saw from some of the other teams. Yeah, you know, it, it looks pretty calm at this moment. You see the other mate, he's got a ballyhoo on a spinner. A lot of times you want to cast a bait on top of the sailfish that you have literally right on top of it, and you might get another bite because there's always a fish behind them, below them, next to them, and you want to cast it right on them, and that's what that spinner is for because you can't do it with a conventional. You know, it's very difficult. So the spinner makes you uh, able-bodied, if you will, to get it to the fish. I mean, we'll cast right on top of it, and it looks like a tangle, and you just go under one time and over, and you're fine. Yeah. But literally, we cast right on top of the fish. And a lot of people that don't know, you know, what you're doing, they think, what do you, why are you casting right on it? You're going to tangle everything. But that's kind of the goal. Get as close as possible, getting that leader. That was quick work. That was nice. That's how you did it, get it done quick. Rebecca, actually, um, I said they aren't in the numbers, not compared to like last week, but I think they have three total sailfish so far in this tournament. The only one with more sailfish would be who? Quantified. So, I mean, they are doing well, just not as well as quantified. And Rebecca's got a white. That looked like a white right there. It looked like a little white. Okay. So that would have been, that might have been Cody. Hey, before y'all throw your baits out. Again, a lot to talk about, a lot to see. Team Rebecca with their catches so far. Again, starting it off uh, on day number one with their released white marlin as well as sailfish. We still got more to talk about. Thanks for watching on YouTube, Peter. Let's uh, let's come back in just a bit. Let's talk about more. We're going to see some more. We got a lot of cameramen on the boat. Let's do it. SFC coverage of the Emerald Coast Blue Marlin Classic is sponsored by Frito Lay. Michelob Ultra. Denison Yachting. And by Salt Life. When it comes to performance, comfort, and functionality, we've got you covered. Performance apparel designed by anglers to make your time on the water better than ever. Salt Life, the official apparel sponsor of the Sport Fishing Championship. Whether you like to ride the wind, find your secret cove, or reel them in, your paradise with GPS map series from Garmin.
This spring, settle in and reconnect with one another. South Padre Island has so many great places to stay. Condos, resorts, and hotels. Oh my! Book your spring getaway today. And start making memories poolside with the people you care about most. Visit SoPadre.com. When you're serious, you are as excited to wake up for a 4 a.m. fishing trip as you were when you were a kid. It means winning three World Sailfish Championships. It means you know what you need and what you don't. Being serious means seeking out the ultimate fishing machine, which is what Peter Miller has found in the unmatched handling, speed, and comfort of an invincible. Pine tar, bay rum, all natural, all natural. It's time for your old soap to take a hike with Dr. Squatch. The best natural men's soap, deodorant, shampoo, and so much more. Dr. Squatch is for players like Justin Herbert, who are here to shake things up, who break records and hearts, who are tough on the outside and soft on the skin side, who only use natural performance enhancement and want their end zone to be fresh. Ugh. Go to DrSquatch.com today. Feel like a man, smell like a champion. Are you ready for the ultimate luxury fishing experience? Join the Sport Fishing Championship talent on the SFC Experience, where you'll explore incredible fisheries and enjoy world-class hospitality from diverse cultures and SFC partner locations. With the SFC Experience, you'll create unforgettable memories with friends, families, or colleagues. Book your trip today and embark on the adventure of a lifetime with the SFC Experience. SFC coverage of the Emerald Coast Blue Marlin Classic is sponsored by BioLite, Publix, Tira Bright, and by Hop Water, a non alcoholic sparkling hopped water. I'm here in Destin, Florida, and we're checking out the Destin History and Fishing Museum today. Super excited to learn a little bit more about the history of Destin and fishing. So come on, let's go check it out. So our museum has over 5,500 square feet of exhibit space, ranging from hands-on kids activities all the way up to 100 fish mounts that were all caught here in Destin Waters. So a little bit of everything. We Our history starts in 1835 as a small fishing village, and we just keep on going from there. Wow. So are you guys involved in any sort of fishing tournaments that are local here? We are. So we kind of help out with a lot of them uh, that are here locally. The big one is the fishing rodeo but we do a few others. We kind of provide old fashioned photos that they ask for them and we're just happy to be here. So everyone knows that the Destin beaches are the most beautiful beaches. What makes them so special? It's definitely our white sands. It's one of the most unique sands in the whole world. So our sand actually got here during the ice age from the Appalachian Mountains. So there were rivers and glaciers moving through the US that no longer exist, but one of them brought down quartz, which is what the Appalachians are made out of, ground it out and dropped billions and billions of pounds of it in our area. And so that's why our beaches are so white, because they're pretty much just ground up quartz. So why is the history of fishing so important to Destin? So the history of fishing is pretty much all we know. In 1835, Leonard Destin came here and, looked and thought this was a good spot to go fishing, and he was right and he started a fish camp. So ever since 1835, Dustin has been a fishing area and now we're home to the largest licensed fleet in North America. So we are, we've kind of carried on that tradition and made it a little bit bigger. We're no longer using seine nets, which are about this high and a couple football fields long. Mm -hmm. We have very fancy equipment now. I told you it was some of the most beautiful sand in the world, and you told me it came from the Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> she whole shot it her on your on your back. I, you know, you gotta you gotta get it in one. You know, I, I don't have a long time to get there. I got a short time to get there, but they, we're gonna do what they say can't be done. We're eastbound and down. Well, some of these teams were actually eastbound and down. I think Quantify that may be the case. It looks like Southern Charm dropped down there south, and then a little easterly as well as Rebecca. Southern Charm, one of our 
Our featured teams week in and week out, not necessarily doing well on the scoring side of things. They only have actual one qualifying event, I, think, I believe, uh, where they finished in sixth yeah, in that one. Um, yeah, they finished eighth place in the Mississippi Gulf Coast Bill Fish Classic. Atta boy. He's tight. I remember back in Louisiana, what? Right there, they didn't make it back in time. Yeah, I do remember that, Robbie. Are you noticing that there was a nighttime bite? 8.06 p.m. They won, yeah, and we had 8.45 or so for yeah. one of five. I saw another Texas emblem on the backs of uh, some of these anglers that are fishing in Florida, so these aren't their home waters. That's right, but they, they're familiar with the Gulf, and these guys, again, they, they travel all around the world doing exactly this. They're, they're pitching baits to billfish. You know, and the ultimate quarry is the big blue marlin coming up on that teaser, making them switch, making them angry, teasing them up, and deploying that flop bait, a mackerel. It could be a, a deboned mullet. It could be a giant horse ballyhoo. But that is really what these guys are here for. But in the interim, when you're catching sailfish and you're catching white marlin, it's the way, the best way to spend your time. You want to be getting bites. You want to be connecting and bringing these fish to the transom. Make sure uh, you can click on the little QR code. Also find out about the SFC yeah, short did. films, a little piece uh, that the, the Preach crew put together, kind of a, a culmination of the event in a nice little short package. So we have our Preach crew, I believe, on the Southern Charm, Jay Haji. Jay Hodge out there. Oh yeah, he's always around. I fished with Jay a bunch of times, uh, Justin Hodges, and we were in uh, Guatemala having having uh, lunch, uh, having guacamole. We had fresh mahi, we had ceviche going, and he and I were standing on the one side, and we were getting bite after bite. That's a good day. And I did not get checked into the side of the uh, cockpit when a fish came up. I did not. Okay. Justin not, knows I, that did a, not happen. There's another story there. Yeah, there's <laughs> another story. Justin's a great guy, he's a great photographer, talented guy, videographer, he does it all. I mentioned the Texas on the back of their shirt. Actually, the team is based out of Orange Beach, Alabama, but uh, the Texas thing's nonetheless. Beautiful, beautiful platform they're on, a 63 Hatteras. Um, and they have, uh, they, they have a small crew. They only have about uh, six people on, as a crew, and then we have the one cameraman, seven. So it's Captain not Landon too Bell. stacked. Exactly, Captain Landon Bell. We got Mackenzie Davis, Ron Davis, Connor McLeod, Lance Ogia, Chase Richardson. And they're in a bunch of categories. And uh, they're in it to win it, and they just the white. identified the white marlin, which is nice. It's dark, boy, it's getting dark out there. That's Chase Richardson on the fish there. And again, cameras make it look lighter than it actually is. Oftentimes, you see that in a lot of golf coverage, you know, where it, they just open up that iris, make it look bright, but it's really much darker. And we're seeing a boat not too far in the distance. So uh, there's 80 boats in our tournament, not counting some of the other ones that are out there, but that's that's pretty tight. All, as they say, all is fair in love and war. You know, you, you, you can fish next to the other boats. It's not a problem. You know, we, we but you're 100. You can be 100, 150. But how do the? Why you gotta get open? You know? Because that's where the bite is, and there's plenty of fish around. They swim in schools, and everybody knows it. So uh, bring them all. I was teasing you. Right? I know it. That's one. Go get them. Catch us a few more, keep it going before dark. We got a little time, 20, 30 minutes. Uh, see what we can do, man. <laughs> we got one, happy to have one. Happy to have one, though, you know what I mean? Happy to have one. It's kind of, kind of been, a, yeah, God, it's rough, rough. Pounded, soaking wet. My shoes are full of water still. Yeah, I told you, Peter, it, it was rougher in some of those shots I was seeing from other boats yesterday. I mean, we're seeing semi-calm seas, but it was pretty rough yesterday. That's a good-sized white marlin and a very majestic jump at the end there. It almost could fool you like it was a blue marlin, but that telltale dorsal, you know, you, you know it's white. You know, I said one, finally, we got one. That's just like my golf game. You know, I get one in a row. You can't have two in a row until you have, you know, at least one good one. Rising Suns, uh, a constant front runner in the Sport Fishing Championship. This was just moments ago here on day number two. Jason Berthelot in the fighting chair. 
And we don't even know what this is. She's planting. You see how she's planting? You know, they're bumping ahead. She's winding as they're bumping ahead. Fish is coming at them right now. She's doing her thing. Always clean that lens. You never want, you never <laughs> want to get that beautiful shot and go, I got the shot. And there's a giant fish scale on the center of the lens. We don't want that. Change the iris, the little aperture setting there. That he's he's uh, opening up there. Father Toby there to the left uh, usually gets some of those underwater shots for us as well. So yeah, they're still rolling. I saw there's a little bust right there. I couldn't couldn't see what it was. It's going let a dolphin? Is that a mai mai? I do not know. See, you know pretty. me. I'm the I'm the absolutely worst. And you've yeah, got your saw life glasses on. She's skipping it. She's kind of she's kind of skimming it across surface. I think surfing down the wave. I would have to say it is it is a mahi, Robbie. I mean, based on the way they're fighting it. They've they've done well with the mahi bite this year. They had a couple of front runners uh, in our championship fish category. It's since been over. Oh yeah. About a she had about a 32 plus pounder, and someone kind of knocked Jumped her out of that pound. loop for the 33 plus pounder. Yeah, Gus did. Gus yep. Rance. So they're catching. These are bigger than what we've seen the first few events. That, but that was kind of a that was kind of a skinny and tall and it's skinny. A, it's tall, tall and skinny. <laughs> tall and skinny and a little bit smaller. He w he wishes he was a little bit taller. <laughs> oh, don't go sink it down. No, he wish he had a rabbit and a hat and a boy six four and Paula. Oh, yeah. But listen, that fish. Yeah, here's the leader. That's the 30, 33 point six pounds for just looking by Gus Rance. Yeah, Angelo Dipaloa won last year with a 40 pounder. I think what I told Ronnie yesterday, I think we'll have a 45 pounder for it's done. Do you think there'll be 45 caught this year? Robbie, my buddy caught a 70 pounder two weeks ago. You didn't answer me. You go uh, be a yes, 45? Yes, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And 70 my huge. buddy caught a 70 pounder <laughs> two weeks ago. What was his name? You can't just... I, I can't give you that information. Okay, that's, yeah. that's top that secret. Nikki Bella on day one. We saw them. Uh, they actually had a couple bites. We saw that 92 foot Viking. You want to talk about being on a sweet ride? This is their Wahoo catch that we saw. Uh, Nikki Bella, 92 foot Viking based out of Jacksonville, Florida. Captain Mark Blanton, Jr., our cameraman on board. That is some platform. And they have that extra fuel bladder right yeah. there, which, you know, which is important to have when, when you know you're going to be in that good bite and you want to be able to run wherever you want. With no restrictions. You don't want no regrets, okay? Not even one letter. <laughs> it's like the tattoo says. And with that bladder, I mean, with, with that being a bigger boat, it's gonna burn more fuel as well. I mean, they, they, they hold more fuel, but they're gonna burn more fuel. Exactly, that's very well put. Some of these boats hold, you know, gosh, I, I wanna say 12,000 gallons, some of them, I would imagine. That's a lot nah, of maybe, maybe not. not. That's a lot of gallons. I mean, my boat, my big center console Invincible holds 700 gallons. I'm a 37 foot cat. So I mean, you got to think something this big. You got good fuel efficiency coming from those outboards, right? What? You got good fuel efficiency. Now, now those when you put your outboards. knuckles to the uh, fiberglass and you're going 70, <laughs> you're burning it just like these guys are. All right. So even to sit in the chair, this is more of a convenience thing, right? I mean, this isn't like this isn't a two, three hundred pound fish, but it's just as easy to sit down and. Just well, your end. well, here's the deal. When you have, when, if they've determined that they do have a Wahoo on, you're going to want to keep it in gear. Because if you yeah. go slack, if you start backing at this fish, they have a tendency to get a big gape, gaping hole in their mouth and the hook will fall out. Okay. So you want to be going forward at all times. So when you're in a chair, it makes it much easier as opposed to picking the rod up. And you know, a lot so of, the a lot of guys. So different than the others as far as that's concerned? Yes, yes. You got to keep it in gear. Always moving forward. See how big this guy is. See, I learned something that, today, Peter. Yeah, that's some green water they're fishing in, too. But I guess those Wahoos don't care. It's not green's good, money's green. Nice job with the Wahoo. And then later on yesterday, this happened. Had Very strappy. Yeah, we had a Wahoo. Now yeah, this. Hose. That hose. Yep, yep. Is that Ethan Cruz? Yeah. He's using that slide method. Yep. Now we're doing the now we're doing the lifting. You know they used to put dish soap under there so you could slide real easy. What was your favorite? Dawn, Palm Olive, what were you rocking? Oh boy, I tell you what, if you were if you were a little chafy, if you had a little issues yeah. going on <laughs> under there, that dawn, that dawn. Mr. Could be Bubbles is getting strong. raspy. Watch out, Peter. Don't even give me dial soap. That dial will get you. <laughs> I was a lava guy. Yeah. Oh man. Take Mr. Lava layer. Lava? Take a layer. 
turn the chair to the right. Turn the chair to the right. There was, there was a guy that uh, fishing for a Marlin over in St. Thomas, and they had him fighting in the chair, and they wound up throwing water on the chair, and it happened to be a bucket full of bleach and water. Oh, no. That ain't him up. They sloughed a little skin off on him, I'll tell you that. We got a billfish there, I believe. Yeah, oh, yeah, billfish. A sail? Yeah, it looks like, looks like a little sail. Beautiful. Yeah. Grab him. Yeah, it should have been uh, Ethan Cruz's catch at about 7.30 last night. So again, we've seen 7.30 and 8, uh, 8.45. Oh, that's a peppy little guy. Yeah. It's peppy Le Pew. That gives you 75 points. Yeah. I'd get that lure back, right? Oh, that, blue, that blue and white Islander is, is, a, is, a, is a killer lure. I mean, if you were ever going to outfit your boat and you said, I got to have a couple lures for sure, that's, one. that's always going to be one of them, a little blue and white. Yeah. Again, we saw quite a few catches yesterday. Great job by Ethan there and the crew. The fellow with the junior on board, our cameraman. Doing a great job. Catch alerts for Nikki Bella yesterday. We saw the the Wahoo catch. Also caught a mahi mahi today uh, this afternoon. Just a little while ago, actually. That was, that was really and just a moment ago. That was less than 10 minutes ago. And that sailfish we just saw just a second ago. But again, uh, it's good to see the activity out there. We hear those sounders. We have the catch alerts when they're possible. It's always a good thing when you're catching fish out there. Crystal Hall, welcome to the show once again. How, how are things down there at the coast? Because we've been looking at all these bright, white, sandy beaches while we're in the studio. Oh my goodness, it's it's beautiful out. It's it's a little warm. Um, as you can see, it's getting windy, and from chatter I've heard out on the water, it, it's been a little rough out there. Yeah, we can definitely confirm that based on what we're seeing on the footage coming into the studio. It is sloppy. The guys are pit, trying to pitch baits, and the wind's blowing the baits across the spread. They got to run back, keep the tip down, tip up, this and that. It takes a lot of finesse, um, and these guys know what they're doing. I mean, there's 85 boats in the tournament. How? Uh, what's the crowd like at the event? I mean, usually it's a pretty big crowd. Are there a bunch of people there? Oh my goodness, yes, you're starting to see the crowd show up and it's it's getting busy out here. I'm excited. Um, I know Baytown Marine, whenever I was doing my research on, I think over what, 200 stalls, I mean, they can allow big boats, but it's a public uh, marina. How many other people are coming in and going out there fun fishing, coming back? Are you hearing reports of uh, good catches in a variety of species? Because I know we're all SFC, but there's more fish in the sea to be caught. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's a good thing. They're catching fish right and left out there. And, you know, it is the Gulf. So all these fish are going to be decent sized fish. So, so what's next? We've seen Peter, I think, was in the floaty. Um, uh, you you going to be doing any parasailing? Uh, we've already had you in the helicopter. What's next? Because it, it can't be a workation <laughs> if you don't have a little cation built in. <laughs> that's a good idea. Maybe I need to get up on the parasail next. It is a little windy out. That's a good idea. <laughs> we'll have to run it. Yeah, maybe you could spot some sailfish for me because you know that was me yesterday in my in my rubber raft <laughs> catching sailfish out of my big inner tube. I had two kites uh, out. It was a whole thing, and everybody was like, so "What are you doing? You're messing up the sandbar." But I'm like, "Listen, I got a fish, no matter where I am." You're so full of it. You need to get a rod and reel in Crystal's hand. She can catch fish, you know. She, yeah. She's done it a time or two. <laughs> Uh, we've got more from the Sport Fishing Championship. Team Quantified coming up. They're, they're not in the lead for the overall championship this year. They took the title last year, but if they take a win here at the ECBC, they are your new leaders and front runners for the 2023 season. We'll see how they're doing today. In Puerto Rico, we call ourselves Boricua. We are proud, passionate, and full of life. On our island, adventure finds you. Strangers aren't strangers for long. The size of the audience doesn't change the beauty of the music. And we celebrate every last ray of sun. Live Boricua.
Salt Life, the official sunglass partner of the Sport Fishing Championship. Well, we're waiting. I'm all right. Don't know about it, but about me. You got to give me a fight. Why don't you just let me be? Hey y'all, I'm Amanda Shaw. We all know Louisiana is as fun as all get out. So get out, take a road trip, and explore our state. Fill her up, then try a new restaurant that's as fun-loving as it is food-loving. Grab the family and take off for monumental adventures at our 21 state parks. Or take a magical minivan tour along our 19 scenic trails and byways. Louisiana's a trip. Take one today. This is Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser. Plan your road trip at louisianastaycation.com. Whether you like to ride the wind, find your secret cove, Reel them in. Plot your paradise with GPS Map Series from Garmin. When you're serious, you are as excited to wake up for a 4 a.m. fishing trip as you were when you were a kid. It means winning three World Sailfish Championships. It means you know what you need and what you don't. Being serious means seeking out the ultimate fishing machine, which is what Peter Miller has found in the unmatched handling, speed, and comfort of an invincible. SFC coverage of the Emerald Coast Blue Marlin Classic is sponsored by Garmin. Invincible Boats. Visit South Padre Island. And by SFC Experience. Welcome back to the Emerald Coast of Sandestin, Florida. Stop number six of the Sport Fishing Championship. Emerald Coast Boo Marlin Classic. This will be a our penultimate round for the Gulf Division. We will crown a champion after uh, the Tift event in Texas at the early part of August. But this is really going to set the tone. Find out who's in the lead going to that final stop. I'm Robbie. He's Peter. Um, I knew this would be a big pivotal you know, moment. Um, the last event was a pivotal moment for Quantified uh, when they took a win at the Gulf Coast Masters. But here, really, going into that one event, everybody's going to know what they have to do to possibly win that extra $100,000 and the Gulf Championship. There are so many fish in this area that it's hard not to catch. I mean, you can go out there maybe a mile off the beach. You're catching big red snappers. You're catching Kobe. As you're catching grouper, a little further out, you get your wahoo, your sailfish, and then you go a little further, and now you're into the blue mark. Marlin territory, and that's what these guys are focusing on because they're 350 points apiece. Unless you catch the first one, yeah. then it's 450. I, I don't know how far you'd have to go to catch the fish that you caught in this tournament. I mentioned just a moment ago about Crystal Hall and having Peter in the background in his uh, rubber. Well, well, just take a look and, and you tell me what you think. The sale, so we get the first points. But also the Wahoo. Is that, is that Peter Miller? Is that man? Peter Miller behind you? Turn around. Is that Peter Miller and his his, his blow up? Fit? <laughs> you better take a look, Crystal. Is, is that Peter? It sure looks you, like the, the same one he has you, back at home. Peter. I know. Yeah. These guys are they're fishing off a floaty behind us. Yeah, that's perfect. That's my kind of rig. <laughs> Call me crazy. I, I think never I've seen this. That, that you guys would spot me like that, but there I am in my homemade <laughs> inner tube. There were about 15 of us that decided to have some fun. We made a PVC structure, which is basically the uh, frame of a tire. You call a tire rim, and you make it like that, and you put this inner tube over it. You, you try to get sponsors for it. Back then, I had a couple, and uh, you inflate this thing. <laughs> you got bait swimming around your legs. I had water up to my uh, shins. Underwater camera bed for I these shots? I had an underwater camera, a helicopter, and three camera boats. Where's his? 
digging. They were filming a show, and he didn't care because sailfish aren't going to bother you when you're down there. He just pushes them away. I had six kite baits out. I had two kites flying. Shot I had a sea up. anchor. You see the sea anchor yeah. yellow? Yeah. And I had a gaff. I had two electric kite reels. I had a bait net, and I had baits swimming around my ankles, sardines, goggle eyes, thread fin. I had needles to sew them on, and I would redeploy the baits. I caught three sailfish in three hours and had a fourth on. It came off. This is some good fishing. Do you do, you do tours of that? What? Do I do tours on that? No, I don't do uh, ru uh, rubber tube tours. I, this right. is strictly that, a, a because one I was man, like, you know, our SFC job. experience could step it up to a whole different level. You know what? If somebody really wants to do it, I'll make it happen <laughs> because I'm a go-getter. You know, I, I'm not, I'm no quitter. Uh, Crystal did find out who was in there, and they, they must have saw Bass and Billfish way back in the day. Uh, yeah, congratulations to these young bucks. Who was that to fishing off uh, Floaty? Josh and Bombshell. Uh, that's cool. Then maybe they're future <laughs> Peter Millers. They, they, you got to start somewhere, Peter. Got to hey, start somewhere. Let's get back to it. Let's, yeah, that's enough about me. Let's talk about me. Just kidding. Let's go to Quantified. We're going to see what they're doing and what they're up to. 9.45 this morning, I believe, or maybe 9.54, whatever it takes. It was about 9, almost 10 o'clock this morning, um, and they're on the fish again. Again, Quantified was not in the lead after day one. They only had one blue marlin, one sailfish, but Liquid Apple had that blue marlin and the bonus that went with it until this happened. This looks like a good fish. I mean, they got that heavier tackle there. Heard a couple of cheers. And again, this is the team that we thought was going to go out there, and I think most of the teams thought they were going to go out there and try and do what they did last week at the Gulf Coast Masters and catch sailfish. Again, you know, hauling butt in reverse. The turbos are kicked in. You trim tabs up and just going back as fast as you can to get this fish. You don't want to waste any time because something could go wrong at any given moment. That fish does a freaky jump, does a little flip-flop, lands on the line, it parts the line, it's over back to square one. So get there as fast as you can. Now when you get there, you don't always get the release, but you got to go for it. It's kind of like, you know, that bir that birdie putt. You don't want to leave it short, right, Alice? <laughs> you always want to go past the hole if you're going to miss. You don't want to be shy. And that's what these guys are doing. They are going to the hole with this fish if they get it. And we really haven't talked about this. Quantified trying to go back to back weekends uh, in the sport fishing championship, but also trying to go back to back at the ECBC. They were last year's champions. Um, last year at the ECBC, two blues, seven whites, three sails, spreading it out among the species. And this was their second blue marlin on already uh, early into day two. They caught one on day one, now on day two. All right, they've been doing some heavy damage with a lower scoring sail fish and the white marlin. However, I say lower, but it took them to the top of the leaderboard yeah. with 20 releases, 15 sales, five white marlin, 20 releases in the tournament to take first place a couple weeks ago or a week ago. That's that is unprecedented amount of catches during this SFC event for the past two years. But now they obviously they've got another blue marlin on. They are doing work. And, and it looks like Justin Graves has kind of been their designated angler too. We've seen that. Uh, he's the one that. They're putting that responsibility in his hands. Every now and then we'll see Kyler, you know, with the rod in his hand. It might be a championship fish. That's right. We might see Kyler. We might see Jake. We might see Mr. James. James David. And that's Jake Graves on the rod. And that's some heat right there. You know, you got that little sideways lean. You know, the fish is sounding. You know, that up and down. You're kind of bumping slowly in reverse at this point to try to stay with it. You know, you're not flying back. This fish is not scoped up. It is not ready. And actually looking at my uh, stats here, Kyler caught two sailfish in less than an hour before this. So yeah. uh, this is a, like a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back almost. Three, three billfish in, in less than an hour. And you know what's nice about that is the muscle memory and the technique allows these guys to be able to catch, you know, fish after fish after fish. You know, you get days when you get, you know, 20, 30, 40 fish. And uh, somebody's got a reel in 10 or 20 of them. And I'll tell you, your adrenaline, everything about it just kicks in. Everyone says, oh, you tired after the tournament? You're tired on the ride home. But that night, I'll tell you what, you can't sleep. Your adrenaline is coursing through your veins. You're thinking about the next day. There's so much excitement. And that's exactly what these guys live for. And that's why they're all out here doing this on this playing field. This is championship fishing in a championship sled. This is the 64-foot Spencer with Tex at the helm doing what he does best, finding those fish, putting his guys 
on the fish, and these guys got to pitch those baits and get it done. See, the fish is scoping up now. Now they're hauling butt in reverse again. Yeah, Riding for, off into the sunset. Thanks for sticking around watching us on the uh, digital platform today. So we got a CBS show at the uh, the top of the hour, I believe, Peter. We'll be bringing you more fish catches as well. That's right. We're we seeing this one for the first it. time. Yep. We've got two hours there. Look at that. It looks like he's got his iPad going. You don't need a little dinky camera. Might as well get the full size. Twisting and turning that boat, you know, waves coming back. You know, usually when that's happening, you're you're trying to back up, but when you have a blue. It's not easy to uh, step backwards and try to get it. Oh, wow, it is. another it's big surfaced. one. Yeah, just a little bit longer. That guy was wild there. Yeah, was, that's what we like to see, man. Uh, that's my moto guy, brap, right there. I gotta do, you gotta do, if you race motocross and you see something jump out of the water like that, it's just a brap. I saw Tech smiling. I like that. Yeah, he, Tex is feeling yeah, good. He has a little smirk, a little <laughs> grin. You know, when your ships come in, I'm not going to do it again, Robbie, but that's a ship that has come in. That was a nice size blue. Miss Ma'am, this morning at about 11.13, you're seeing the wrap there. That's right. That's uh, on their 70 Viking. We got Cooper. We got Cooper Yancey in the chair. So we're seeing a flurry of blue marlin here on day two, right? Is that, my, is that my boy Sid on a jumbo? That is the that that is a big lady right there. Beefy. That's a big. Yeah. That's a big. And ain't over till the fat lady sings. They're gonna put a tag in it. Sid's gonna hold that leader, and they're gonna take a take take a little think to see how big this fish is. Um, but it doesn't look like anybody's trying to do anything with it other than release it at this point. A Cooper Yancey, young angler, did a phenomenal job. That is a big fish. Got Sid on that leader again. The whole Yancey family is having a great time doing this entire circuit. That's a good size fish. Yeah, that's a big one. You, you'll see Sid's arms kind of, you always want to have an elbow bend. When you got a big fish like that and they shake, they'll pull your arms right out of your socket. So you always want to have a little recoil. You always have a little spring in there. And you want to keep the, that leader low. You know, you want to keep it at chest level. You don't want to go above your head. Past couple of weeks, some bigs have been caught in the Gulf of Mexico. I'm hearing uh, we know a big was caught in the Atlantic, I believe, last week at uh, Block Island, uh, a town we're going to be going to here in uh, another month. Quantified's in the lead with 11.50. That's a different number than we saw earlier, I believe. Did they catch something else? I think they're yep. uh, moving farther up the leaderboard. Quantified, look what Apple, but look at that massive tie for third place again. You can have a tie for any position, but first. And Quantified is definitely first right now. All right, boys and girls, it's uh, about 13 minutes till the top of the hour. We will be on CBS Sports Network at 4 Eastern. Make sure you join us. Get to see some of these catches you saw here in our digital program, but also more. And I mentioned the Quantified have a few more points. Looks like they might have caught a sailfish just a little while ago with James David. So again, more catches this afternoon. Uh, since 2.30, I see five catches, whether it be yellowfin tuna, mahi, blue marlin, sailfish. We've got them all, Peter. We even got wahoo in there. Wahoo! I knew that was coming. Every time you said, yeah, and uh, possibly some bigger championship fish that we haven't seen yet today. I know Sammy Hargroder has a mahi-mahi on Badonkadonk. I want to see what that one looks like.